Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tom's Gadget Garage. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at the Gyroor X2 electric scooter. Now, this particular scooter is designed around running those shorter errands around town. For example, going to the mailbox, uh, dropping off packages at the post office, running to go get some groceries, really focusing on those shorter commutes. And the beautiful thing about the Gyroor X2 is that it's very budget friendly and it's UL certified. Now, full disclosure, Jairur did reach out to me a couple weeks back asking if I'd be interested in reviewing their scooter. So after looking at some of the details and finding out that this thing has 12 inch tires, I decided to absolutely send it over. But as always, all opinions, views, and conclusions are my own. So without further delay, let's pop this box open, get the scooter assembled, and uh, we'll go over all the details and then take this thing on its first ride. All right, so there you have it. That is the Gyroor X2 in its fully assembled form. An assembly was pretty straightforward. All we had to do was attach the handlebars, the rear basket, as well as the latching mechanism on the stem. Now, Gyroor does claim that the X2 will go upwards of 18.6 miles an hour, as well as 20 miles in theoretical range. So we'll absolutely be putting that to the test as soon as we get this thing charged up. Now, in the front, as you can see, we've got our 12 inch pneumatic tires. And generally speaking with scooters, the bigger the tire, the better. That gives you much better ability to go over lumps and bumps in the road, as well as adverse terrain, uh, which reduces the likelihood of you flipping over on your scooter. So this scooter comes equipped with front and rear manual disc brakes. Uh, up front, we've got the 140 millimeter rotors as well as the 140 millimeter rotor in the rear. Now, in the back, we've got the 550 nominal watt brushless motor. That's what gets this thing going. So we'll see how that performs. Uh, and on the other side, which you can't see right now, is the actual charging port. Speaking of charging, the X2 comes equipped with a 36 volt, 7.8 amp hour lithium ion battery, uh, which can be charged in about five to five and a half hours with the included 1.5 amp charger. Now, as you can see, this scooter has a pretty robust looking kickstand. Uh, and as we work our way towards the front, you'll see that this scooter actually has a really wide deck. It's actually nine and a half inches. So plenty of foot room. We'll see how that uh, works out when we're riding this thing around. Uh, as we work our way up front, you'll see that we've got a headlight here. Uh, so we'll do some night rides, see how that works out. This is our latching mechanism. So you simply lift this up fold out the latching mechanism, which will allow you to fold this stem down. And you've actually got a lock here, which will actually lock into uh, the back of the scooter. So we'll see what that looks like here in a moment. In terms of that folding mechanism, all you have to do is undo the latch. And as you can see, this here latches directly into the rear basket. So the basket is an integral part of this scooter. Now, as we work our way up top here, you've got your ergonomic hand grips. You've got brake levers here on the left as well as the right. You've got an integrated bell, which sounds like this. So plenty loud. Uh, this is our latching mechanism uh, for when you wanna fold this stem down for portability. Of course, this is the quick release for the handlebars, which made attaching these handlebars really easy. Uh, this here is the control uh, pad and display. You've got a power button down here, so you just push this. It turns the LCD display on, and you've got three driving modes. Uh, you just click on this, it'll take you to mode one, mode two, mode three, and if you double click, that'll actually turn on the headlight, uh, which looks like that. So we'll do some night rides, see what that looks like. And I actually wanna take you back here to look at this tail light. Uh, so this is a functioning tail light and brake light combo. So when you hit the brake lever, it actually blinks, which is huge for both day and night visibility. So nice to have that feature on the X2. So another nice addition is that Gyroor actually includes these bungee cords. So if you have uh, any kind of cargo you want to put in here, uh, you simply can strap it down with the included bungee straps. Um, one other thing I want to mention about this scooter is that it does support riders up to 265 pounds. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this thing charged up and we're going to go ahead and take it on our first ride. 
All right, so we are out riding on the Gyroor X2, and so far the ride is very stable. Now, one thing to keep in mind is this scooter doesn't have shocks, so no suspension at all, but with these 12 inch pneumatic tires, they do a really good job of absorbing a lot of that impact. So, you know, this is probably one of the first scooters without suspension that I can actually say is really quite comfortable going over bumps. Just drove next to a dust devil there, so it got really windy really quickly. Now this scooter does have a quarter twist throttle here on the right handlebar, so you just give that a twist to get going. Um, you know, so far it's really responsive, really comfortable, no issues with that. Uh, the Gyroor does have three primary driving modes, mode one, mode two, as well as mode three. Uh, right now we're in mode three, let me switch over with a single click to mode one. Let's see how quick we get going here. All right, so mode one caps us at about 12, 12 and a half miles an hour. Mode two uh, gets us to about 15 to 16 miles an hour. And mode three will take us to the top speed for this scooter, which is 18.6 miles per hour. All right, let's see how well these 12 inch tires do off the beaten path here. So this is how this scooter performs on dirt and gravel roads. So far, so good. Now, of course, it'd be a lot smoother with a suspension, but I'll tell you what, these 12 inch tires do a pretty good job of absorbing some of this impact. All right, so let's do a little bit of an acceleration test here and see how quickly this scooter gets up to 18.6 miles an hour. Here we go. We're at 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 19. Okay. So, you know, it doesn't get up to max speed in a hurry, but uh, not too bad. So this scooter does have a 550 watt motor in the rear, as well as front and rear disc brakes. Uh, and we're at about top speed right now, so we'll go ahead and give these brakes a quick test. All right, solid braking power. Uh, so brakes are definitely not an issue on this scooter. They do a really good job. One thing to call out about this scooter is that you do have that rear mounted basket uh, and it is a kick to start scooter. So you need to propel yourself with your foot till you get going about, you know, two miles an hour or so and then the motor kicks in. Uh, so when you do use it as a kick scooter, just be sure not to, you know, hit your foot on that basket. I've done that a couple times, uh, but now that I'm aware of it, uh, I can avoid that. Uh, in terms of maneuverability, it's solid. This is a scooter that you can definitely cruise around on comfortably. Uh, it is very stable, very well balanced. I don't have any issues with that. Uh, this LCD screen is also really easy to see uh, in the daytime. I'm having no issues at all whatsoever with that. In terms of what you do see on this screen, uh, it'll give you your top speed. Uh, it'll give you a trip meter. You've also got an odometer to track total mileage on the scooter. It'll give you your battery levels. Uh, you also have the ability to look at the voltage. And so on this scooter, if you wanna switch, you know, to say, looking at the voltage, you just long press uh, the mode button and it'll switch over. So right now it's saying we've got about 36.7 volts. Now this scooter does have a smaller battery. It's 36 volts, 7.8 amp hour. So it's good for about 20 miles according to Gyroor. Of course, we'll be putting that here to the test soon. Uh, but so far, this is a really good solution for cruising around town, dropping off packages, going to the mailbox, getting some groceries. And so we're driving on a pavement bike path right now. And as you can see, there are gaps between each of these pavement panels and the scooter actually handles them really well. So definitely feels much better than your typical scooter with you know smaller you know nine or ten inch wheels that doesn't have a suspension so these uh standard tires do a really good job of absorbing that impact all right now we are cruising around off the beaten path and uh yeah this scooter you know handles you know dirt paths really well no issues 
I don't feel like I'm fishtailing or anything like that. Uh, it has really good connection uh, to the ground. All right, let's see how well this thing transitions from dirt to gravel back onto the pavement. No problem at all. Now this scooter does have plenty of deck space, so it's like nine and a half inch wide deck, so plenty of room for your feet there. In terms of handlebar height, you know, I'm 5'10", uh, and this handlebar height is, is perfect for me. You know, budget-friendly scooters, you know, a lot of times you're not gonna have the strongest acceleration, uh, or the best range, uh, or the best top speed, but compared to some other budget scooters, like this has got a really good ride. Acceleration is, is pretty decent. Uh, I have no issues at all hitting, you know, the top speed of this scooter, which is 18.6 miles an hour. Now, as I mentioned just a little bit ago, this scooter isn't like a long range commuter. You know, so if you've got long commute, this isn't going to be the solution for you. But if you're looking for something for shorter distances, to go run errands around town, to go grab that, uh, you know, small bag of groceries or drop some packages off at the post office, uh, run to the mailbox, so, you know, run those kind of errands. This is like the perfect scooter because it has that basket built into it. It's relatively lightweight uh, and portable and you've got bigger tires. So if you need to, you know, cross over bumps in the road and things like that, it's able to handle those no problem. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and hop off here and we will take a shortcut to this shopping center here. And so now we're riding around in some gravel and we're still upright, so that's always good. We've got a little bit of an embankment here. Let's go ahead and cruise down this thing. All right, and let's see if we can muster up enough power to get back up. Oh no, we reached the limits of the scooter. So super steep stuff like that. Uh, you'll definitely want to make sure that you've got some runway. Um, Jairoor does say that this scooter uh, will climb inclines up to 15 degrees uh, so you know light to kind of light moderate hills I think this thing will do just fine I haven't had any issues so far but if you're gonna be going over steeper stuff if you've got a lot of steep stuff on your commute this probably isn't gonna be the solution for you all right we got a little bit of speed let's see if we can make it up here okay Made it right up. Another thing to call out is that this scooter has a tubular frame design, which means you've got plenty of room to attach accessories. So if you want to attach a phone holder, uh, an accessory light or anything like that, bottle holder, you can absolutely do that. Uh, another thing that's nice about that is that there are plenty of places for you to mount uh, a lock or loop a lock around if you need to secure your scooter while you you know, go into the shop and get some uh, shopping done. So definitely a maneuverable scooter to zip in and out of uh, parking lots quickly. And that's the beauty about scooters is, you know, you don't have to sit there waiting in traffic all the time. You can go take the back roads and the back paths to get to where you need to go. All right, so we're at about 6.3 miles on this trip and we've got a uh, little over half battery remaining based on the gauge here. And so, like I mentioned before, this scooter isn't designed to win you the marathon. Uh, it's really designed to run those, you know, short trips around town. And in case you were curious, I was actually able to confirm uh, with GPS the top speed of this scooter at 19 miles an hour. So a little above the 18.6 that they uh, advertise, which is always a good thing. Now, in terms of water resistance rating on the Gyroor X2, it comes in at IPX4, which gives you some protection against splashes and light rain. So if you are riding in those kind of conditions, you should be covered. When it comes to range, Gyroor does claim that the X2 will get upwards of 20 miles on a single charge. Now, in my range tests, while riding around in mode three, which is the fastest speed mode on relatively flat ground and me weighing in at approximately 205 pounds, I was able to squeeze out 11.66 miles. And that's with an average speed of approximately 15.2 miles an hour while reaching top speeds of 19.3 miles an hour. So as I mentioned before, the X2 isn't intended to be a long range commuter scooter. It's more designed around those shorter trips. Think, you know, run to the grocery store to grab some groceries, you know, maybe dropping off some packages at the post office, running down the street to the mailbox, 
really designed around those shorter commutes. So if you need to ride, you know, anywhere from 10 to 12 miles round trip, this could be the perfect scooter for you. So over the past couple weeks, I've had ample time to extensively test the Gyro X2, and here are some of the things that I really like. First and foremost, it's gotta be the 12 inch tires. You know, when it comes to scooter, generally speaking, the bigger the tire, the better. And with the Gyroor X2, you do get those 12 inch tubed pneumatic tires, which do a really good job at absorbing impact. And I think I mentioned it previously in this video, but this is probably the only non-suspension scooter that I find relatively comfortable almost to the point where it feels like it has some suspension, even though it doesn't. All of that is a benefit of those tires. The second thing that I really like about this scooter is the fact that it has no problem reaching its top speed of 18.6 miles an hour. And according to GPS, it actually exceeds 19 miles an hour. And it's able to maintain that through basically 90% of its battery. I can't tell you how many times I've tested scooters that will hit those top speeds, but don't maintain them for very long. The third thing that I really like about this scooter is the fact that it's got an integrated basket, which is huge if you're gonna be running those errands and you need to load something up in the back instead of having to put it into a backpack or having to buy some extra bag accessory that you attach to the stem. It's got everything built into the scooter. The fourth thing that I like about the X2 is that it actually gives you a voltage readout on the display, which is huge because you know a lot of scooters, e-bikes, will give you some bars which will tell you how much battery capacity you have remaining, but those bars aren't always the most accurate thing to look at. The fifth thing that I really like about this scooter is the fact that it is UL certified, specifically UL2272, which means the entire electrical system on this scooter is UL certified. Now, in terms of things that I think can use some improvement on the X2, there are a small handful. One, uh, the folding mechanism. I have found that when you fold the stem and latch it into the basket, uh, that basket actually gets really close to the power button. And so if you don't have the uh, handlebars angled appropriately when you fold that down, it is possible uh, for you to hit the power button if you're not paying attention on that basket. The second thing on my list is gonna be the intensity of the headlight. Now, to be fair, most scooters out there don't have the brightest headlights. Now with the Gyro X2, um, it is a pretty decent headlight. The problem is all the light is focused directly in front of you, uh, not to the sides. And I think, you know, if you're gonna be riding around at night, it's nice to have visibility not only to the front, but also to the sides. So with the X2, I highly recommend getting an auxiliary light uh, to give you some better visibility when doing your night riding. Uh, good news about the X2 is that it's got plenty of real estate on the handlebars, as well as the stem uh, for any extra lights that you want to attach to it, as well as other accessories like phone holders, extra bags, and all that fun stuff. And the third thing on my list is gonna be something related to the brakes. Now, this scooter does have a really good braking power. That's not an issue at all. But one thing that I do notice is that the front brake is substantially stronger than the rear brake. Uh, so when you're you know, actuating the rear brake with your uh, right hand lever, uh, you'll find that you've got to apply quite a bit more pressure to slow down than you do with the front. Maybe it's just my unit, but you know, I like to see more balance out of that. But regardless, uh, using both brakes, you've got plenty of stopping power uh, on this scooter. So overall, the Jaguar X2, I think, is a steal of a deal at the sub $400 price point. I'm actually really impressed overall with the amount of scooter that you get for that price. So if you're looking for a relatively inexpensive scooter to you know, do shorter commutes, run around town, cruise around the neighborhood, the Gyroor X2 is definitely a solid candidate to look at. So let me know if you have any thoughts or questions about the Gyroor X2 in the comments below. And what I'll also be doing is including a link in the description of this video, uh, which if you decide, hey, the X2 is the right scooter for me, if you use that link to purchase it, you actually help support uh, this channel and keep the wheels moving on future reviews. So thank you in advance. I'll also include a coupon code, which will get you an additional 15% off the X2. Now, as always, thank you so much for tuning into Tom's Gadget Garage. We'll see you next time.